refresh a couple times, it hits 105. Uh, you saw already in the earlier diagram that there's a load balancer in front of the application. So you have a, a, the URL mapping logically to the application, but now I actually have two physical instances running. And if we look at this view, uh, if I expand this, we can see that the two instances are both listed down here, and we can see their URLs um, within this view of the application. So that's how we can increase and decrease uh, the number of instances running in the application. Under the covers, it's, it's a REST API call. So there are actually other ways that you can do this if you have some, um, if you need to do it dynamically within your application. But this is the, the simplest way through the STS plugin. Okay, and I, unless you have something to add, Ramnivas, I think we can move on to a demo using Roo. Yeah, that sounds good idea. Okay, so what I want to do now, you've seen a simple STS template application. We want to also show you a Roo application and a Grails application. So we probably should have titled the, uh, the presentation from zero to cloud three times in 45 minutes, because uh, that's, that's technically what we're doing here. Uh, I'm going to begin a new Roo project, same thing, from scratch, using the standard um, uh, template uh, or, or wizard within STS. I'm going to call this webinar dash root and the top level package I'll just say org.example and this creates a root application <clears throat> and I should be taken to the root shell and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create an extremely simple Roo application with a single domain object called person, and person is going to have a name. Um, what's different about this application compared to the Hello World app is not only I'm building it with Roo, but I'm also going to be using a database. So we're going to have a persistence layer storing our person objects. Uh, it's going to be using MySQL. So I'll be showing you how you can bind a database service to the application running in Cloud Foundry, and it works out of the box uh, just like it would if you were deploying locally. So the first step here is persistence setup provider. I'll use Hibernate database. I'll use MySQL. Then I'm going to create an entity, and it's going to be in the base package, person. Then we'll create a field. And this experience is more different than if you were to deploy it to just for local de uh, deployment. Application exactly the same. There is nothing Cloud Foundry specific here. So I'm adding one field to this, which is going to be uh, the person's name looks like I have a problem here in um, Permgen space. <laughs> you want to just restart STS, probably? Yeah, if you don't mind, um, maybe just briefly talking about what's going to happen next. I'll, I'll restart this. So what we'll do is uh, we'll have it restarted, and then when the application is done, uh, application is implemented, we will push it to uh, Cloud Foundry. And what we want to do is there is we want to provision a MySQL service. Uh, because if you were to deploy this locally, you probably will have to configure to point to MySQL host and port, uh, username, password, and so on. In Cloud, however, you will have to do it yourself. and uh, how instead of making you to worry about all those details, all you will end up doing simply is provision a service. We offer not just MySQL at this point, but also other services, uh, MongoDB, Redis, uh, and we'll add more services as we go along. And once you bind that service, once you create that service, you bind that service to application. So essentially, and you will see a process is very simple. 
And once you bind the service, you push the application just we did for Hello World, you bind it to a URL, and start the application. What we do is in the process is we, you wouldn't have modified your application. So you wouldn't have any code that says, let me connect to the cloud data source. We automatically detect that you are, your application is MySQL database. And we will auto reconfigure your action on the fly without you, you, you indicating so to that will bind to the one that is uh, provisioned in cloud. So your application that was using local uh, MySQL will now start using MySQL in the cloud. And then application will simply just work. Okay, so uh, I'm back in STS. Let's see where we are. If we pick up with this. Okay, so I think we're where we left off. Let's just see how this goes. Um, so I, what I'm going to do is create a field for the name. Let's say this cannot be null. Okay, I think it's not bound to the uh, the class. You know, I'm just going to. Um, you no, know, you can create uh, Mark. You can just say focus uh, tilde dot person. Okay. Oh, dash dash class till they person. Right. Okay. Okay, so here we are. Let's try this again. Field string name. Okay, that looks better. Thanks, Ramnivas. Um, now I would need to create the web controller. So I'll just do controller all package tilde dot web. At least you know we're actually running a real demo here. <laughs> and we're still going to get three apps in the cloud within 60 minutes, I believe. Um, yeah. So this is now creating the uh, web controller layer. Now I should have a web application. And I will drag and drop that one to my Cloud Foundry server. And this is where we're going to bind the service. So I choose webinar root. It hasn't yet been deployed. I'm going to open this up to full view so you can see what's going on here. Uh, what I'm going to do now is create, I'm, I'm provisioning a service. I'm going to call this root DB. And since we're using MySQL in the root app, I'm going to choose MySQL. You'll notice here that the other uh, services that, that Ramnivas mentioned, we have Mongo, we have Rabbit, we have Redis. Choose MySQL. And I bind it to the app by dragging it into the application services tab. And then I click start. Just like the Hello World example, I can choose my memory allocation. I can choose the URL that I want to use to post this. And now what it's doing is it's deploying this RU application uh, into Cloud Foundry with this MySQL database that I bound to the app as its backend persistence layer. And what we'll do is quickly go to the home page here. We should see your standard Roo view once this loads. So webinar dash Roo, create a new person. <clears throat> it's a normal Roo application. You can see enter name is required because I said not null. I'm going to create person Ramnivas, and there's Ramnivas. List all people. So it's, it's a standard RU application. Nothing's different here except that it's running in Cloud Foundry and that the service is bound to it. And with that, I think uh, since we spent a little bit of time with the restart there, I'm going to move right into Grails. And this will be the fourth application, I suppose. Bonus? <laughs> yes. Actually, if we count our uh, environment example, then this is our fourth application. So what I'm going to do here is actually use the, uh, the command line. I want to show you running at the Grails command line 
using a new Grails plugin that was specifically um, implemented for deploying your application into Cloud Foundry. So it's basically uh, you would use that to deploy the app instead of doing a deployment to Tomcat or Jetty or some other server. It also gives you a lot of capabilities, uh, the same capabilities basically that you have in the STS plugin where you can create services, bind services, and so on. So we're going to begin with your standard uh, create app. And we'll call this one um, webinar-grails. And then when we go into that directory, we'll be creating a domain class here. And I'm basically going to create the same application that I did with Roo. I'm going to create a single person class. We go into webinar grails and then run grails create domain class org example person. Same domain instance. And then what we'll do is we'll add the name field um, to the person.groovy class that's being created. So we go into Grails app, org, domain, org, example, person. And I'll add a name field here. And just like with the Roo app, we can say that uh, this one has a constraint so that the name field cannot be blank. Standard Grail stuff. And then we create the controller for that person. So we'll use Grails create controller org example person. And in this case, I just want to use the standard Grails auto scaffolding process. So I'm going to edit my controller and specify here scaffold person. And that will auto create the full capabilities of the controller for me. Now this is where it, it diverges. So that so far it's just standard Grails application creation. I'm going to now install the plugin. So I do Grails install plugin cloud boundary. And now this project is going to have the Grails uh, Cloud Foundry plugin added to it. In a moment, you'll see a listing of all the commands that are available through that plugin. You can see here they all are uh, prefixed with CF. What I'm going to do is create a database for this to use, just like we did within STS for the Roo app. So I create a service. It's a MySQL service. This is going to auto-generate an instance for me and give it a unique name. And we'll see that name in just a moment here. And then all I need to do is push this application <coughs> while binding to that MySQL service. So there you see the service was provisioned. I'm going to do the production version of the Grails application so it's actually using this database uh, rather than an in-memory database. I'm going to do CF push. That's a command from this plugin. And then I'm going to specify that I do want to bind the service that was just provisioned. So I'm just simply going to copy and paste that here as the dash dash services argument. Hit enter. This is going to deploy the application and it's going to use the URL uh, as the project name by default. You can change it in a properties file. But in this case we have hello, uh, sorry, webinar-grails.cloudfoundry.com. It should tell me that in just a moment. And I'll paste it into the browser. Enter. I want to use that URL. Uh, would I like to bind to the Roo service? No. I've already bound to the MySQL service. And you can see it's telling me that now. So it's using 512 meg. And it's binding to the MySQL instance that I just created. It's building the application. It's uploading. I skipped this important step, uh, so what I should be able to do is go refresh the browser as soon as this is done starting the application. Okay, webinar. So one, thing I, one thing I want to add is, you know, if you, if you develop Spring application and let's say you want to do it outside of STS, the same experience is available. So we have a command line client called VMC. So if you build your project using Maven or Ant or Gradle and you got a war file, and in fact you may just got this war file from somewhere, 
you can push and you can bind services and you can do all the things that we did it for the Grails application using the VMC client.